When a man is silent, is it because he is strong? Or is it because he has been taught to suppress his emotions since the day he was born? Hi everyone, I'm Michael Oliver Love, and today I'm going to be talking to you about a topic that has been less addressed within the gender studies sector, and that is manhood and masculinity. A little bit about myself to start. Uh, when I'm not being super studious here at Red and Yellow, I am a fashion photographer with my work uh, specializing in deconstructing the rigid binaries of masculinity we have in society today. And I'd like to present a sense of freedom and less emphasis on traditional gender roles uh, to show a gentler, softer, and more vulnerable side to the models I shoot. I also started an online magazine called Pansy about a year ago. And today it is centered on fashion editorial content that is sent to me from around the world every day. The common theme that runs throughout my work is definitely on presenting an alternative masculinity that I feel today's mass media lacks. And my drive in the sector of activism, per se, definitely comes from my upbringing in the small little town of East London. I'm sure you can imagine how strange I felt in the small-minded, rugby-obsessed town that is kind of a melting pot of bad ideologies and old-school values, where boys are taught to be tough and strong and reject anything feminine. And having gone on to major in gender studies at the University of Cape Town, I began to process and realize all these bad ideas I had been taught and have become somewhat obsessed with changing people's perception on what it means to be a man. So to start off, I'll give you a little gender studies le lesson just to get you in the frame of mind that I'm gonna be dealing with. Uh, and that is with two, two terms that are often misused and confused, and that is sex and gender. Sex, for the most part, is somewhat black and white. It refers to our biology, our genetic makeup, our bits that determine whether we are male or female. Now sometimes this is not so black and white, but that's a lesson for another time. Uh, and gender, this refers to the way we perform our existence, the way we, the, our interests, the way we carry ourselves, and so on. And these attributes can be described as either masculine or feminine. Now masculine would refer to being tough, liking sports, and being strong, like our friend Arnold Schwarzenegger over there. And being feminine would refer to being fragile, and weak and pretty, wearing makeup and having lots of emotions, like our girl Britney Spears circa 2001. <laughs> now the society we live in likes to drive a wedge between these two poles, saying that masculinity belongs to strictly to people sexed as men, and femininity belonging strictly to people sexed as women. However, there is no intrinsic connection between sex and gender at all. Sex is our bodies, and gender is our minds. It is learned behavior that we pick up over the years based on how we should or should not behave, how we sh what we should or should not like. It's like painting your son's room blue before he's born and can actually tell you what color he wants. Um, anything that blurs this is faced with discomfort and unsurety. And this is called the gender binary, and it is something that exists in all of our minds sitting here today. And I'm sure we all know a first team rugby player who likes to bake cupcakes as well as go to the gym and then crochet on a Sunday. And these people exist and that's totally fine, but that is not this is what society tells us. And just to show you how this binary works, here are a few phrases that I'm sure we've all run into once or twice. Boys don't cry. Don't act like a girl. Man up. Grow some balls. Don't be a mama's boy. Be a man. Here we can see this binary showing itself. Men must be masculine and reject anything feminine. No weakness, emotion, or sensitivity. Man good, woman bad, essentially. And imagine what this does to the psyche of young children growing up learning to find their place in the world, and the inherent misogyny, sexism, and homophobia embedded in statements like this. And this is the kind of discourse that surrounds young boys from a very young age, where school, school becomes a sort of training ground of what it means to be a man, where they must suppress vulnerability and embrace aggression. And pop culture is also to blame for this. The Hollywood is infamous for its portrayals of masculinity and actually has four main archetypes. Firstly, we have the strong, silent guy masculinity. This guy has it all together, he needs no help, and God forbid he shows any emotion. Shout out to all the James Bond films ever made. <laughs> Secondly, you have the superhero masculinity. This involves high levels of violence and physical conflict being used to solve all of man's problems. Then you have the thug or gangster masculinity. And this refers to high levels of violence, high levels of crime, and are most often portrayed by men of color. Lastly, you have the man-child masculinity, or the man stuck in perpetual adolescence. 
This guy may not be as fit or violent as the others, but he projects masculinity in other ways, like degrading women and being involved in high-risk, stupid activities. And put them all together, and what do you have? A silent, unemotional, highly violent, involved in crime, degrading woman, and doing stupid, crazy things, man. And that is what Hollywood tells us, is manhood. And it also trickles down into the gaming industry, where some of the most popular and most played games are centered around male characters who are highly aggressive and violent, and show little to no remorse and emotion. And this just further perpetuates this dam damaging narrative we send to young boys. And it also is involved in the uh, branding process. Let's take Sorbet, for example, a brand that has done quite well in the beauty sector and services your manicures, pedicures, and so on. Now, I can imagine the conversation went something like this. Why are no men coming into the stores? Why are we ha missing this male market? What can we do about it? And someone put up their hand and said, why don't you put the word man in the middle of a giant razor blade? <laughs> That'll solve the problem. Because a man can't go and get his legs waxed or his eyebrows threaded without the fear of pain and danger and bombs going off, apparently. And this is what we call fragile masculinity. And the brand has managed to evolve to solve the issue of men being uncomfortable with the femininity and girliness attached to the original brand. And this is also seen in product design. Here we see a bath bomb being described as a man grenade bath blaster, because you can't take a bath without the fear of a bomb going off, apparently. And here we have Hero Clean, dishwash liquid built for men, because you can't wash the dishes without making sure your masculinity is still intact. And how about man chocolate? I'm not even going to go into that one. <laughs> Here we can see this binary really showing itself. It's the physical manifestations of the anxiety surrounding what it means to be a man and this immense pressure we put on young boys and men. And just how fragile and stupid it actually is. And while it may seem somewhat trivial, uh, the reality is far from that. A study done in South Africa in 2014 shows that there is one suicide every hour. And on top of that, five male suicides to one female suicide. And I'll go out on a limb and say that this statistic has to do with the aggressive, hyper-masculine and silent narrative we feed boys from such a young age. And 75% of men will not seek mental health treatment. And that is because we teach boys to suppress their emotions and not express them. And it doesn't just affect men, but women as well. In South Africa, a woman is raped every 36 seconds and one in five women will experience physical violence in their lifetime. In a culture that teaches men and boys that they are dominant and that women are subordinate and that masculinity is to be prized and femininity is to be rejected, this is what is a culture that enables this kind of statistics. And the stats show that this is growing. It's at a growing amount and it's not getting better. We live in a toxic culture of masculinity that teaches aggression, violence and silence. And we need to become far more aware of this and aware of the behavior that we tolerate and the power of the words, in our words. Let's all imagine for a moment a world where we could express ourselves however we see fit, not bound by gender or sex and encouraged and positively reinforced to be unique and true to ourselves. Not masculine, feminine, male, female, but human, like we all are. Sounds pretty good, don't you think? Thank you.